Prince of Innovation. So right now it is monarch butterfly season. And for the past couple of years, I have been um, raising some monarch butterflies. And I thought to make a video on it. So this year, the obvious question is, the obvious question is, can we make a video that explains why you do the monarch butterfly thing? Yes, we can. So in this video, I'm kind of going to be explaining um, what the monarch butterflies are and how they grow up and a little bit of information about them and why it's really good and helpful for the environment to raise them. Let's get into it. Now, before this video begins, I'm going to be giving you guys um, what the monarch life cycle looks like. So they start out as small eggs and they look like this. They're very tiny and hard to spot. So if you see one in the wild, I'd highly recommend taking it in and raising it. Um, so you'll find these on milkweed leaves, which I'll explain how to find those later in this video. But basically, um, you look on the bottom, they're very tiny and they look like a little white dot. And be careful that there's no other bugs or insects on the, um, the leaf because that can be a um, predator of the monarch. Then they grow up to be a little caterpillar and they slowly keep growing. So here are some pictures I took as my caterpillars grew. When they're caterpillars, they do poop a lot. But um, then after they get pretty big, um, maybe about the size of um, a pinky finger, um, maybe a little smaller, maybe a little bigger, depending on the size of your pinky, um, they will climb up onto the roof of um, your like caterpillar um, cubicle. That's what I was raising mine in. But um, you can use like, you know, maybe like a, um, like a plastic bin, but make sure it has light and air can go through it. But they'll climb up to the roof and they will make like a J shape. And um, after a while they form a chrysalis. Chrysalises look like this. Now, um, here's a picture of a caterpillar forming into the chrysalis. I think this is really cool because we captured the moment where it goes really fast between the J shape. It stays as that J shape for a really long time. But we finally captured, um, as soon as they start making that chrysalis, it goes quick. It's really cool. Um, now, they're going to be in the chrysalis for about two weeks, or um, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Um, and once they come out, they're a monarch butterfly. But they do need their wings to dry for about um, 24 hours, like two to 24 hours. And I'd recommend releasing them um, during the daytime, because at nighttime, they're a lot less likely to survive. So, if you have one of these um, cubicles like I do, then you can open up the thing, and if the butterfly doesn't um, escape right away, like it has in here, um, you can kind of touch it, and it should um, crawl on your finger a little bit. Oop. And there it is. Really, really beautiful creatures. And give it a minute to go. Get used to the outside air and wind and stuff like that. You can get to crawl on your finger like this. Kind of cute. And there it goes. Now, what flight do the butterflies take? They go from North America to Mexico, or they go from Canada to Mexico, but they go from the north down to Mexico and they come back. So now what happens is um, the butterflies, when they're in Mexico, they take, um, they go all the way up to North America, but this usually doesn't happen in just one life cycle. It takes multiple. So um, it might take four or five um, generations of butterflies of laying and um, um, laying eggs and hatching caterpillars for it to make it all the way up to Canada. But at the end of the summer, when they're in North America and they need to get back down to Canada, uh, I mean, back down to Mexico, they lay, um, the female butterflies lay a special generation of um, caterpillars that are called the super generation of monarchs. And these impressive butterflies can go all the way down from, I mean, all the way up from Canada or North America down to Mexico, all in one generation. They live five times longer than a normal monarch butterfly, which is pretty, pretty incredible to think about. All right, so we actually have some milkweed in our yard. We have um, some swamp milkweed and some regular milkweed. Um, common, this is called common milkweed and it can be invasive, but it really does help the butterflies. So I would recommend planting both. Just make sure it doesn't take over your garden. 
Where do you get it then? You can buy this at your local garden center or you can find it somewhere and um, transplant it to your yard. Just make sure you don't kill it. The roots are pretty large. Now, here's an interview with a local butterfly expert, Mrs. McCarthy. This is Mrs. McCarthy. She's one of my neighbors who is a um, like butterfly expert. And right here, she's got a butterfly cubicle and we're by her butterfly way station. So I'm gonna be asking her a few questions. Um, first off, um, how do you get inspired to um, raise butterflies and have this butterfly way station? Well, I think that you'd see more and more people in the neighborhood raising butterflies. And I started looking for eggs years ago in my garden. I was too late. I saw some eggs, but they were a different species. Oh. And after that, I got hooked. That's great. All right, on to the second question. What do you think people should know about monarch butterflies or caterpillars? Well, monarchs are in big trouble. They're really uh, a poster species for extinction. And that the reason that they are in trouble is that we've gone to using Roundup as a herbicide. Uh, basically, 20 years ago, farmers in the Midwest and the South and the East everywhere used to disc their fields. They would disc in between the rows and that would keep the weeds down, but it would not kill the milkweed. And 90% of the area of the milkweed is in an agricultural area in the United States. So that's why agriculture is so important. When they went to Roundup, they sprayed and of course they planted corn and soybeans that are Roundup resistant. So the plants would be fine, but the weeds would die, including the milkweed. So when our monarchs try to fly to Mexico or come from Mexico, there's no habitat and there's no food for them. Yeah, so it's really important to help raise the butterflies, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, and now I know that some people could think that we're kind of interfering with nature here. Um, why is this like, you know, okay and helping them? I know you kind of already- Well, we are, that. we are interfering. But the way that the monarch reproduces is she might lay 300 to 500 eggs and only a very few of those would survive because of so many other predators in the world. So when we have very little habitat for monarchs, we know that they really can't lay enough eggs to make enough reproduction. So that's why people who enjoy monarchs or enjoy gardening have stepped in and are trying to raise them themselves. Tell whether they're male or female. Well, the females have slightly larger veins that are a little bit thicker, and the males, when they open their wings on their lower wings, they have two black dots, and those are pheromone pouches, uh, which they could use for pheromones, uh, but believe it or not, they've evolved so that they don't use the pheromones. Wow. How about that? Yeah, that's really interesting. I know. I know. So, um, they're in the brush foot family, and they have the pheromones. So, uh, and that's why their feet are so tickly when they stand on your hands because they have little Velcro pads on their feet. And that's how they hold on. How about that? Really interesting. That's really great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again. Wow, that was really a great interview with Mrs. McCarthy. I learned so much, and I hope you guys did too. I mean, really, thank you so much to her. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy and learn something from this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and leaving a like down below. But I really think butterflies are cool and more people should raise them. Finn, I would love to say that reminds me of a butterfly joke, but sadly, all the butterfly jokes are pretty bad. So I'm gonna give you a moth joke, which is not really like a butterfly joke. But anyway, what subject do insects learn in school? I don't know, what? Mathematics. Oh boy. Whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!